So, Dave, we're here at the Academy yes. uh, Sports Rigs and Techniques here at the CCA Workbench. And you're going to share some permit knowledge. I am. You know, I've, I've seen a few permit, and I've seen a lot of them in pictures and stuff. I only caught one, and that was by accident. And uh, But, you know, when, you, when they get really big, he's a jack. So, you know, he's a jackfish, so he's going to fight like a jackfish. He, yeah, he, they fight hard. And they got that big, you know, like wide tail like they all do. And they're wide, elongated bodies. As a matter of fact, when they get really big, they look a lot like a giant trevally from the side. Correct. They have that same elongated but very wide body and those, and those big stiff fins that really, you know, that's how they give it to you. They get on their side and give you business. Now, because they're, <clears throat> you got to worry about how hard they fight, it's important to pick the right rod when you're going permit fishing, correct? You know what, that's exactly right, Dave. Now, see, this is one of the things, I'm so glad we're talking about this tonight because these, both these rods are Akumas. One is an offshore design rod, medium heavy rated. Right. Okay, now we actually have this big Azor, but look at the difference in the size of the rod that you would use if you were fishing offshore in a reef or a wreck situation where you don't have to cast. Look at right. the size of the differences between these two rods and reels. It's, I mean, it's amazingly different. Both of them are rated medium heavy. The difference is one is an inshore design so that it has a light tip. It has obviously small uh, fighting area here. So it's just not nearly as big. But the point is that this is designed for fishing inshore where you have to make technical polling. I mean, chasing after yeah, the yeah. fish versus reeling one up from deep water. Correct. Now, with that being said, you got to understand if you're going out in the center console and you're going to be fishing on wrecks or reefs 20 feet of water, you're going to want to use this big rod like this Akuma here. Mm -hmm. You know, the key is that. Plus, to get, having, them, get them away from those other critters down there that might want to eat them as well. Absolutely. So the one thing I think that we need to understand is when we're fighting a fish, a, a permit, Dave, a big mistake we make is that we fight him like we would fight a tarpon or we fight him like we fight a redfish or a snook and we want to pull down his backbone. And as soon as he feels that line touch his side, what did he do? He immediately turns the way that it touched him and he comes back at you. So my good friend, Mark Croker, who's caught more grand slams on bait than anybody alive with his <laughs> clients, he taught me early on when we were f doing a lot of fishing together in the early uh, late 90s and early 2000s, is that when you hook a permit, you hook a Jack Creval, it works for a Trevally if you're in a different country, you're gonna want to pull. If the fish is going left, you're going to pull, stay ahead of the fish, so that when he's constantly pulling against you, it works similar to a tuna as well. Those right. fish that are, have that same shape, they'll do this. As soon as you try to pull down their backbone and try to back them up, what they immediately do is turn around and go this way or turn around and come back at you. So it doesn't work by pulling down their backbone like you could typically pull most fish. Keep that, that in mind. It doesn't wear them out as much. It, absolutely. So my, the rod that I like is the Shadow Stalker medium heavy seven foot. I load it up. It's still a place for mono on the flats, Dave. This yes. is 12 pound suffix superior in the blue. And I double the line. And you know, we've gone over this years and how to hook a crab. You're gonna just hook the crab in the side. But as you can see, this VMC 7385 of 5.0, Dave, mm -hmm. is gonna go in the side of the crab. But listen, this is what's so very, very important. When you go Whoa, it just to did it by pull, itself. <laughs> look, if this is the permit's mouth, the snook's mouth, anytime we're using a circle hook, you just pull. And look right. how it goes. Every time, guys, if I pull hard, you see what happens? You yank, it doesn't snag. You just want to pull lightly. Look how the hook turns every time. You see that? Yeah. It's that simple. That's what you have to keep in mind. The it's, set it's, it's very hard for fellas because we do the same thing when we're using circle hooks for blue marlin or anything else. And everybody wants to jerk because that's how we all learned, you know, when yeah. we're bass fishing or fishing for brim. You know, when you get a feel a bite, you pull back, not with a circle hook. And I'll tell you what, even with a J hook, it works better if you just reel most of the time. 90% yeah. of the time, if all you do is reel, you end up getting a hook in the fish. That's some of the great things that I learned fishing with Mark Croca is even when we were fishing J hooks for in the Red Bone series, you know, with, with a shrimp or with a crab, when he'd get a bite, just reel. And he said, Rick, reel a thousand times the speed of light times a trillion for <laughs> 10 seconds, and then he'll be hooked. 
Yeah. Because what we well, always want to do. especially with the do, mono. Right. And what we always want to do is right about the time that the drag starts to take over and you feel that pressure in your reel handle, we want to look up. We do it offshore. Mm -hmm. Right when you start to see the, the drag the start drag to go off. out, we stop. We feel the pressure and we stop. Don't stop, guys. Reel through the pressure and you'll hook more fish that way. Beauty. The follow through. Yeah, the follow through. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of follow through, it's Bree. The follow through. And if you listen to everything Rick says, you'll definitely catch a permit because I did and I caught a permit. It was great.